Hello students, welcome back to TG campus. In the series of issue of shares, we are going to see another important concept now that is nothing but interest on call in arrears and interest on call in advance. Let's see. First of all, we have to understand what is meaning of call in arrear and then we have to see accounting interest for the call in arrears, right? See here. It is payable by the shareholders to the company on the call due but remaining unpaid. For example, today on 12th of August 2023, company is expecting from shareholders a final call money of rupees 3 per share. And suppose if shareholder is not making payment of these 3 rupees on 12th of August 2023, then they have to pay this call money along with the interest whenever they are going to pay right so we have to calculate what we have to calculate interest on call in areas and shareholders supposed to pay this money of rupees 3 per share along with their interest right then as per the table f maximum prescribed rate is 10 percent so as for the companies act 2013 a maximum rate of interest when there is a call in area is 10 percent right then so, which period we have to consider for calculation of interest on call in arrears? From the date of a call money was due to the date of the money is finally received. So, if my due date is 12th of August 2023, from the 12th of August 2023 up to the actual date on which shareholders make the payment for this period, I need to calculate interest on call in arrear. So it is a nominal account in the nature and is credited to the statement of profit and loss account income, right? So interest on call in areas from the company's point of view, it's income and we have to credit to the profit and loss account statement. Then we have to see the accounting here for the call in area now. See here. First of all, we have to pass general entry for interest receivable on call in areas. That is nothing but we have to record first of all that we are going to receive interest on call in arrear. So entry will be shareholders account debit to interest on call in arrears. So why we debited shareholders here? Because shareholders are nothing but the debtors for me now because I suppose to collect interest amount from them along with the call in arrear amount. So that's why I have debited shareholders account and I suppose to credit interest on call in arrear account. So why I have credited interest on call in arrear account? Because it's income for me and we know sir, we have to always credit income, right? Then, so after recording this, when I received, actually received the interest amount, at that time I will be passing general entry bank account debit to shareholders account. So I have received amount, so I have debited a bank account and who is the giver of the money? So shareholder is the giver of the money. So in the previous entry, I debited shareholders I create shareholder as my debtor and if today if I am receiving amount from him, I need to credit him, I need to cancel down that account, I need to settle that account. So that's why I have created shareholders account, right? So these two entries we have to pass when we are recording interest on call in areas. Now we have to see about, so what is interest on call in advance and which accounting entry we have to pass for the same. See here. So what is advance that we know? If the shareholder is making payment before a due date, that is nothing but the call in advance, right? So for example, company is expecting from shareholders, he should pay on 10th of July 2023, first call money of rupees 2 and company is ex expecting that on 10th of August 2023, shareholder should pay a final call money of rupees 2. But what happened here, one shareholder who is holding for example 1000 number of shares, he paid entire amount at a time of first call only. So it means on 10th of July 2023 that shareholder paid 2 rupees of first call money plus 2 rupees of final call money, right? So company received total how much? Company received total 4 rupees and company receiving here 2 rupees before it's a due date and that is known as call in advance. So now it's a 
liability or you can say responsibility of company to make payment of interest on that two rupees of money that company is using before due date from the shareholder and it is known as interest on call in advance right so it is a payable by the company to the shareholders on a call money received in advance but not yet due right then so as per the table f maximum prescribed rate is 12 percent so as per the companies act 2013 company have to pay maximum 12 percent interest on call in advance what, what should be the period from the date money was received to the day call was finally made due so in my example so money received is on 10th of july and the money actually due is on 10th of august so for that one month i need to calculate interest on call in advance shareholders are not entitled for any dividend on call in advance but obviously then it is a nominal account in the nature with interest being an expense for the company so it is a nominal account and whenever you are doing accounting for the same you have to remember you have to consider this interest on call in advance as an expenses for you right and then accordingly we have to pass general entries as well so we have to see the general entry now as we discuss interest on call in advance is expenses from the company's point of view so first of all we have to record we have to record that we have to pay interest on call in advance so what should be the entry so interest on call in advance is expenses for the company so we have to debit because the rule says debit all expenses and losses we have to debit expenses so interest on call in advance account we have to debit and we have to pay this interest on call in advance to the shareholders so here shareholders are a creditor for me right so i need to credit shareholders account after passing recording entry next entry is for the payment of interest and the interest payment entry will be shareholders account debit to bank account right so in the previous entry you created shareholders account because you're supposed to pay them interest on call in advance and now if today you are paying then you have to debit shareholders account right so these two entries we have to pass when there is a interest on call in advance right hope you understood this hope you enjoyed this right thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for the upcoming videos as well thank you Thank you.